hello hello this is Revere Sky hi and today we have Big Doug Big all Doug. you single ladies out there that's Doug LaFlow on Instagram D-O-N-L-A-F-L-O-W 23 okay yeah. so yeah this is Don LaFlow he helped me make um, is it real yeah so yeah so we're gonna conversate today because it's time that the person that like has been around me for a while we go places we do things we have a little track record together and it's just good that people actually see like this person this being that's always around me and yes he's always around me and I'm always around him but at the same time we go our separate ways we do our separate things but at the same time we always you know just help each other see like what you do where you been you know make sure we doing something that we need to be doing other than just I'm a good friend yeah he's a good friend, good friend. right 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 so he was asking some like banging ass questions okay and I need to be looking at you the camera he was asking some banging ass questions and I'm, I want to see can he remember the question or at least one of the questions that he asked me so that we can like go over some of the scenarios of what if why and some possibilities you want to talk about it well it was diving on the topic of diving <laughs> well, I mean, that's what we're, we're diving into this topic okay on uh, uh, being led mm -hmm. and led by just just being led you know and I ask you do you feel because I actually told you you have a strong spirit uh-huh very strong spirit mm -hmm. and I ask you do you feel that your spirit is being led by the inner inner you or do you feel it's being led by something else, whatever that something else may be? And that's a good question. And why it's a good question is because we as beings, we have a vessel which is just hardware. And we also have different aspects of ourselves that manipulate the things around us, who we are, what we are, and how we grow, and what we're supposed to become. And me, as a shadow worker, I know the depth of living within the body and living outside of the body. And we become part of people's lives where to the point where, let's say, how can I explain it? Some people live outside their body and some people live within their body and the people that live within their body somewhat cherish their body more than the person that lives outside of their body. Um, not only that, I want to get on that subject that we was what I was hitting at exactly. Okay, you are your own oversoul. So either you're going to expand your hardware so that you can receive more data that's like you can have a 256 megabyte RAM I meaning you only can process 256 megabytes every so often or you can have 16 gigabytes of RAM and process a lot of things just like how much breathing room do you need are you a one terabyte body or are you a 16 gigabyte body you get what I'm saying so First, you have to expand that inner side of self, that spiritual side of self, that physical side of self, so that spiritual side of self can grow and live within you more. And some people don't. Their vessels just dumb down and they can't receive more. They can't receive where they come from, their celestial body, their oversoul body. They can't receive any of these things because they're shut down. So, there, there are times when I actually take the body into account where the body actually runs in idle mode. And idle mode is when you're just living your everyday life and this is your routine. There's no thought. There's no counteraction. It's like your soul says, you know what? I can put this person in this pattern. They can live this life and I don't have to think. They're just going to process life this way. And your soul will take a break. 
your soul will have your body and your conscious and a cycle that just keeps you going, going, going through this program. But then once the soul is ready to interact or to intervene, let's just say you stayed up processing too much paperwork because you work somewhere in a cubicle somewhere. So what happens? Your oversoul is saying, okay, Bob is a little sleepy today. Um, we actually need to intervene. You know what I mean? That's like running in idle mode where your oversoul say, you know what? I'm going to get Bob to go out and get some spring and sunshine today or we're going to let Bob get a nap. We're not going to push it. You know what I mean? Because otherwise, the body will just run in idle mode with no thought, no conscious, no awareness or whatsoever. So when you start embedding this conscious and awareness and stuff, then the body, the oversoul, the spirit and all that use their conscious side of self to actually start driving the ship. And the ship is the vessel, the body. And that's the hardware. You made an analogy. Mm-hmm. Referencing a car. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the car. Just like the car. Like, does the car exactly know what's going on the car is just driving okay let's say you're running idle mode every day you drive that car and you're just driving and if your field of vision doesn't pick up on something that's dangerous or stopping you from your daily routine you're to the point that you can even start texting reading a map eating putting on makeup and everything while you're driving it's like it's programming. You program the body to just act certain things out without you even being aware. And it finally dawns on you. Damn, I just went three hours and now I'm in a whole new state. You know, you don't realize it, that the body can just go on its own and the oversoul can actually take you somewhere and have lunch and dinner and come back to the body again. Like you can leave and go when you want to that's the same as the cars like the car is not going to drive itself unless you program it to drive itself just like you could program yourself every day I need to do this in the morning and if you do it every day you'll start doing it without thinking about it just like I pick up my phone the first thing I click is Instagram just instantly Instagram I, I, I pull down notifications Instagram that's it it's like something about Instagram that's just different than other things like I could be saying, let me call my mom, but I automatically click Instagram first. So it's amazing how repetitive things can put your body in a in a cycle where you don't even have to use your oversoul. You don't even have to use your conscious because you're programmed to just do certain things and only certain things. But when you get outside of that cycle and start wanting to receive the messages from your conscious, your mind, your celestial family, and all of that, things change. A lot of awareness kicks in. A lot of observation kicks in. That's that critical moment when I say when you critique your own existence. Pretty much. I also spoke on my experience. Mm -hmm. Which I'll share. Uh, I felt like most of the time which would be 80% of the time. I, within the inner me, is in control. Mm -hmm. of the vessel. Mm -hmm. But there is that 20 to 30% time period where my spirit just takes over and I have no control. Like an example would be I was driving down the street one day and I saw someone that I knew sitting at the bus stop and some told me to turn around and get his friend uh, ten dollars even though I'm rushing I'm late I'm trying to get to where I'm gonna go I'm in traffic you know LA traffic middle of the day I don't want to turn around but my spirit was so strong about turning around and giving that man that money that I had to it was nothing I could do but turn around, pull over. Hey, man, I'll see you here. Some just told me to give you this. I'll see you around. Mm -hmm. And it could be even heavier than that, especially if the people are in tune about it. Like, like um, this one lady, 
she was um she was telling me to listen to Jesus. God had an answer for me and stuff, and I kept having this cramp. I was going through the cleansing and the detoxes. So anything in me, like any little pebbles, any uh, gallbladder stones, any kidney stones, anything was coming out of me with this deep cleanse. Like everything was touching on me. So at this time, I kept getting this ache. And the girl came to my table talking about Jesus Christ and stuff, and she said, uh, You don't happen to have gallbladder problems, did you? Damn. It's not about the Jesus and stuff. She didn't throw me off, but she just had to give me this message. And she was like, You wouldn't happen to be having gallbladder problems. She started talking about her sister having gallbladder problems. And I looked at her, and I said, Thank you, Jesus. It's like, I'm not a Christian. I don't go to church, but I do have a Christ conscience. And there's a time when certain conscious, certain spirits, certain energies work within other people. They're that voice, they're that message. At that given moment, you can become housed by other things. Like today, um, I took someone out for their birthday, and we went to go see these elderly people, and um, this one lady, even though she goes to church, she was like, uh, I tell my kids, even though I go to church, I burn that sage. She said, I got my anointing oil and I burn that sage and I always ask them, who you bringing in here with you? You know what I mean? Because she thinks that something's walking with these people, riding them, taking them for a ride. So either your spirit, it could be a good ride or it could be another mission. You know, people have different types of missions. You know what I mean? Really, they have different types of missions. Mm -hmm. So you have to be mindful of what's riding you. Another thing, um, one thing I always say is um, alcoholics. Like literally alcoholics. I mean like somebody that leaning over, throwing up, can't take care of themselves. Like there's alcoholic suicidal. Now these type of people are doomed. Like their soul has no purpose for this body anymore like the vessel could do nothing they they have no calculation to have this vessel to be at any good timing at any spot to do anything which that's a lot because i've been around alcoholics that actually if you gave them the home and the house to take care of themselves they would actually be there as long as they could as long as somebody loved them but at the same time these people are mentally suicidal and they drink themselves, drink themselves, drink themselves. And then they can then become jumped. They can become jumped, something can ride in them, something can make them evil, or something to just void all access to the body and the body just goes through the system of, I need alcohol to suppress it to keep my feelings and emotions at a level of no return, you know? So, I see it a lot in many different forms, many different fashions, sexually suicidal people, um, uh, just mentally suicidal people, all of that now. You see what I'm saying? So, it happens. Like, certain shit just rides you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, speaking of ride, when you mentioned the car mm -hmm. analogy, it made me think of, you know, like like I said, 80% uh, of the time, I'm in control. They mm -hmm. have 20%. And, you know, it's almost like, does a car recognize it's a car? No, there's a car and it takes a human to drive. Of course. A human is in control of that car. Right. A car is in existence. Of course. A car is, you know, being used as a vessel. Mm hmm So, that analogy. And there's be, another energy inside of it you know, controlling it. A few different energies. No, of course. Uh -huh. Yeah, a few different energies. Mm -hmm. No, I just think uh, it was a good topic to kind of dive into. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm and, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. I know you do, yeah. don't you? <laughs> yeah, so we just wanted to talk about that. So, riding the body, acknowledging when you are running in autopilot mode. You know how you can just wake up, I gotta get this coffee, I gotta get this newspaper, I gotta get this gas. And you're just walking into that um, job or whatever you're doing. You're in autopilot mode. Like when you stamp those papers, you just go one, two, three, four.
call these numbers, call that numbers. It's just already designed for you. It's autopilot mode. So you have to question yourself. Where's your soul? Where's your oversoul? Where's your spirit? What are y'all doing? Have you thanked them for even continuing to even let the body exist? All the elements matter at this point, at this given time. You know what I mean? It's very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, there we have it. Do you have anything else you'd like to say, Big Doc? Well, you know, something that popped in my head, uh, is something I kind of shared with the world earlier on Instagram. Was, uh, it was a thought. It was about sometimes your only transportation is to take a leap of faith. Uh huh. It was a picture of a fish jumping out of a fish bowl. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I saw the show. It was a fish jumping out of a fish bowl. You know what this fish is jumping into, what he's getting away from. It's the half of the fish bowl, but sometimes you just gotta take that leap. And that's just something I just kind of wanted to share. That's it. Like, oh my God, there's nothing up there. What is that? You know, just imagine being a fish living in this water or. Us living in this air, and all of a sudden the body touches water, like dense water. Like your body is like having to change its surrounding and what it feels and what's touching it, and cope to that existence, that atmosphere, that environment at that moment. Could have been a bigger fish bowl. Yeah, he got more room. He leaving a little fish bowl to a bigger fish. Bowl. Right, he didn't know. He's just it's time to get out of here. Right. And sometimes you gotta know where. Like what the. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, and it happens, and they do. You see it every day. Like, there was one, I'm going to keep it short, and I'm going to say this last thing. There was a point when I felt that the Katrina hurricane had sent a bunch of demonic, not demonic as in bad people, but a different type of species of uh, energies out of the the murky area down there with all the hoodoo and all the creole and all the french and all that stuff down there that patois and all that mm. well when they ran up out of there it was like all the spirits went to the next best hood you know and it was like ever since then like these young boys were so vulnerable as they was being raised and grown up they were being jumped by these energies and just go through a neighborhood and just start knocking people out like this little boy pop up missing this gang banger or this and you know it wasn't like that you know what I mean it wasn't like that before so for that to happen it just shows that you can be jumped okay either you're gonna drive your ship or someone else is gonna drive your ship and that's even down to your bread and butter it will ride you it will drive your ship okay what you focus on grows. What you focus on will either elevate you or decrease who you are as an individual that plays within our existence on this planet, okay? So yeah, it matters. What you focus on definitely grows. Physical self guiding your brain, the spiritual self guiding your actions, your life. Well, Somewhat mentally, mentally, what you're driven for. When you wake up in the morning, whatever you're thinking about is what matters in your life the most. Whether that's rent or whatever, it's just that's what matters the most. And that's what matters. Like your emotions, your heart controls your will and your power. Your mind is like your ego and it controls your thought patterns and it, it try to control your heart. It try to control your body. And everything, your mind will tell you you're hungry when you just ate. Your mind will tell you you need this and you actually don't. But what's actually relaying those messages, anything, like we can get on to like parasites and everything. We all have parasites and they control the gut and the gut controls the mind. And that's another thing. Nobody want to talk about that brain. They don't want to talk about this brain, but this brain is just as important. So everything governs something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there you have it. There Big you have Dons, it. Donna Flo, 23. That's me. Get me up, ladies. Single ladies. Single ladies only. Yeah. He is definitely single, yeah. but he's a very nice guy. Good, good hiking friend. friend. Everything. Oh, we party. Oh, yeah. We're like 
security on security over here, you know? Yeah. Definitely, definitely. We're very, yeah, we like to hang out. Yeah. Do things. Do things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, unearth the magic. The truth will definitely set you free. And yeah, always remember, breathe from the womb, breathe from the womb. And also for fellows out there that don't believe in the womb, bring breathe from your spine, okay, your lower spine. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs>